Howdy folks, ARP Congo here. Today we're going to be looking at the Japanese carrier tech tree line. This is going to be a simple guide on how to carrier essentially. We're going to go over equipment, in what order you should upgrade, upgrades, commander skills, signals, and then we'll take it out for a quick game and see how I would play that particular build or carrier in any given situation. So for the start we're going to be talking about Japanese carriers. In this episode the Ryujo, the tier 6 Japanese carrier. So, for equipment, when you first get the carrier, one of the first things you're going to want to upgrade, either use free XP or some of your first experiences, you're going to want to upgrade the torpedo bombers. This is a big upgrade. You go from uh, 6 aircraft in the total squadron to 8, so you have a whole nother wave. And torpedo bombers, is with the Hosho at tier 4, Torpedo Bombers are going to be your main source of damage in this line. This is going to continue through the Shikaku and the Hakuru at tier 8 and 10 respectively. So the Torpedo Bombers are going to be the first thing you're going to want to upgrade. Next, Dive Bombers. They're arm piercing, so they're effective against some ships and less effective against other ships. They're mostly your second source of damage, um, so I would upgrade those second. Now, for the third upgrade, you have a bit of option here. You can go with the attack rockets. That's not a bad thing. Upgrading them from tier 5 to tier 6. And all of the aircraft, when you upgrade them, are you go from tier 5 to tier 6. Um, so you get more hit points, more speed, uh, more damage in the case of the torpedo bombers and the bombers. The rockets, however, they, they get a little bit more health, a little bit more speed. And you get two more in the payload, so instead of two rockets, it's four. But they don't do any more damage. So you can upgrade them, or you can upgrade the hull. Now the hull will give you, from the stock hull, you'll get you know more HP, and you'll get a little bit more AA. Um, and some maneuverability with the carrier. If we look at the stock hull, you can see we go from a, a 13.4 second rudder shift with the upgraded, fully upgraded hull to a 9.5. So that's, you know, you have an option there. You're, you're probably going to want to take both anyway. Um, so whether you take the hull first or the rocket, that's up to you. For upgrades, air groups modification one. Uh, this just reduces the time that your aircraft take from making a strike to returning to the carrier. They're 20% faster. Uh, Aircraft Engines Modification 1, this means that you can use your engine boost 10% longer. Uh, and the next two upgrades are going to be Torpedo Focus. Aerial Torpedo Modification 1 increases the torp speed by 5%, and Torpedo Bomber Modification 2 increases the torp health by 7.5%. Again, as I mentioned earlier, you are a Torpedo Focused Carrier, so having more HP and faster torps is good, because torpedoes are your main focus. For the commander skills, uh, your first 13-ish points are going to be pretty standard for most carriers, especially the Japanese, the Japanese carriers. You're going to take air supremacy, improved engines, aircraft armor, proximity fuse, and then survivability expert. That's basic 13 points right there for a Japanese carrier. You're going to take the same 13 points on the Shikaku and the Hakuru. So that's your starting build now for the remaining points it depends if this captain is going to stay on the Ryusho as a perma captain i opted for taking secondary armor expert now this isn't necessarily for the secondary reload time because you only have six x2 secondary guns so six on each side um and they're pretty short range this is more for the continuous and shell explosion damage because your AA values are mediocre at best as a carrier. And in the late, you know, late game when you might use most of your fighter consumables and you want to push together to protect your team, having that slightly higher AA is going to be helpful. Also, it will help against carrier snipes. Um, as a tier 6 carrier, you have no bulge protection whatsoever. None you have no bulls protection. And if we look at the armor layout, the armor is non-existent. Uh, so rockets and torpedoes are very scary against you. Now you have, if we go to the equipment here, you have a personal defense fighter. This is an automatic consumable, just like the tier four carrier. It will 
activate when your plane spotted or when you're spotted and it will circle and engage at three kilometers it will engage any aircraft however that being said the way fighters work as of our the current update of world of warships they will shoot down a number of fighters equal to or they will shoot down a number of aircraft equal to the number of fighters so in this case there's four here they will shoot down four aircraft now that doesn't mean they will shoot down four in the squadron they themselves will shoot down four aircraft meaning you will get four shot down by fighter ribbons so if a carrier is striking yours and i'll go back to the commander skills if a carrier is striking your carrier and say your aa ticks and it kills a plane while they're fighter locked and you get the shot down ribbon not shot down by fighters then your fighters will continue to engage those those aircraft until they shoot down four aircraft by fighters so in practice if you you know have an aircraft strike coming in your aa might shoot down one aircraft and then if you're lucky and you get good rng or you get it right at the right time your aa might shoot down a second aircraft while the fighter is tagged and then the fighters will always shoot down four aircraft so in a sense you've shot down six aircraft which for most carriers is a vast majority of their strike groups if not their entire strike group so it's just it's helpful to shoot down some of the aircraft and just protect yourself because you have no bullets protection and your aa values are mediocre at this tier at best now if this is not a captain that you're going to keep on the Rijo and this is a captain you're going to move to the shikaku and to the hakuru as you move up the line then instead of this i would take um torpedo bomber the arming distance is incredibly helpful torpedoes are your main focus and the japanese torpedo bombers have an ungodly long arming distance so torpedo bomber is the next thing i would take um and then from there you'll probably get to the shikaku um but if you don't um then i would take either enhanced reactions or site stabilization and improved engines that's more personal flavor are you using your fighters more for spawning or for shooting down aircraft at this tier you're probably using them more for spotting um so site stabilization does help a little bit you can kind of get away with not taking this on the japanese carriers but it's more personal preference uh if you need it or not as for exterior um camos or signals i would take for combat uh juliet whiskey uno flooding 15 percent flooding is super helpful uh your torpedoes have a very high flood chance but it's not guaranteed so having 15 percent more is just helpful uh consumable reload time pretty self-explanatory your fighters recharge faster your engine cooling comes back faster speed flag um you're pretty fast but at 29.4 knots but you want to be faster um just to be able to run away from some ships i mean something like a congo can move you know almost 30 knots and that's a tier 5 battleship that's not counting destroyers with their engine boost so being a little bit faster just helps you to maybe get out of situations um if you get caught third um oh and then the last signal is uh aa fag uh you don't have to take this but again this is just i like to have that little bit of extra a because every plane that my aa does snipe is one less that my um my fighters will shoot down and in a sense i can shoot down more aircraft or late game when i'm out of fighters or i'm trying to protect my team it's just a five percent bump in de uh, of, of uh damage um other combat signals you could take uh fire flood flag this is more for the flooding chance not necessarily the fire chance the fire chance for the rockets is nice but as i mentioned rockets are kind of meh uh on the tier six carrier um you don't get any more ant damage they're only for they only do 2.2k damage they're really only for pestering destroyers or super low health ships so the extra fire chance is nice but the flood chance is mainly what you're after here uh ram flag i guess um anti-fire and flooding um if you're gonna take one of these flags i would take flooding um fires only last about four seconds on your carrier um they do do four percent of your four or five percent i can't remember how long they last but it lasts about four to five seconds it is one percent of your health every second um so this in the grand scheme of things is not going to help much um but flooding reduction is actually very useful because floods on carriers do last 30 seconds and more importantly 
floods slow you down. Um, if you're being shot at by a ship who's going to light you on fire multiple times, you're probably in a bad position, so this kind of loses loses value. But in this case, if you're being dropped by a carrier torp and you get a flood, being able to recover that faster, if your damage control is not on, uh, is not active, is, is on cooldown, for example, uh, this is, is kind of helpful. But for the most part, I would take these four. And then for economic and special, take whatever the hell you want. All right, let's take it into a battle. So as a tier six carrier, um, it's kind of a mixed bag. You can get top tier, you can get middle tier, you can get up tiered. It, it, it's all over the place, honestly. So we will wait and see what we get. And you do get double uh, double carrier games uh, at tier six. It can happen. Uh, it isn't until tier eight that double carrier games are unlikely or exceptionally rare. At tier six, they're, you know, more common, but they're still rare. Um, at tier four, they're very common. Uh, tier four, a lot of people were playing carriers at that tier. So tier four, carry, double carrier games are, are more likely. Tier six is eh, kind of, oh, okay, here we go. And then at tier eight and 10, it, it's very, very unlikely you'll get double carrier game. Alright, let's see. So it is a double carrier game. Uh, it's full tier 6, so we are top tier. Uh, so, first thing I'd like to do is look at what they've got. So, in terms of AA, that's going to be obnoxious. Uh, Dallas and Pensacola, American, very high values. Defensive fire could be annoying. Um, the destroyers, not too concerned about. Uh, Makarov, it's a, a German clone, I believe. So it, it's probably not going to be. Dunkirk is pretty vulnerable. War Sprites have got pretty decent values. Same with the New Mexico. We're going to start rockets. And then the two carriers. We are on fault line, and we spawned a side. We're going to spot uh, Scout A for our Farragut. Uh, if we spot the destroyers... Now, a good thing to note here is, like, the Farragut and the Fubuki, they're in a division together, so it's a very likely that they're going to be wolf pack. So if we can spot one, there's a good chance that there's going to be a second one. Uh, so we want to be mindful of that. We're just going to go ahead and drop our fighters here, kind of deter the Rijo. Hopefully our Farragut will use that. Uh, that'll just kind of help him get into the cap without taking too much chip damage. Um, and we will look and see. Now, we are spotted. Our planes are spotted, so there's probably a destroyer over here somewhere. Pensacola. Ah, yep, and there's the Farragut. So we've spotted the Farragut. He's in a division with the Fubuki, so the Fubuki is probably here as well. And he's actually smoking. See, don't don't do this. Don't don't do this. Th this is bad. If you're gonna smoke as a destroyer, either smoke before your plane spotted, or don't smoke at all. Yep, and there's the right there. We're just gonna go ahead and recall those. We're not gonna be able to get on that strike again. Um, don't don't do what that Farragut did because he smoked. He still got struck because he smoked as as he got plane spotted or after he was already plane spotted. So slowing down just makes it easier for me to, to strike you. And here, what I'm doing here, I'm, I'm pre-dropping the first strike. Um, you want to kind of pre-drop, and I'm actually gonna move my carrier over towards the Furious because if we look at the minimap down in the corner, we can see there's two New Mexicos, a Dunkirk, War Spite, Pensacola, and both of the destroyers are over here. So this flank is very volatile. We don't want to be over here. But we want to go ahead and already start moving away from this flank because it's unlikely that we are going to win this flank, and we don't want to get caught with our pants down. Uh, in fact, we turn into that. What we're gonna try and do is we're gonna try and turn around and hit him with a cross torque. He's actually slowing down and smoking. And see, again, if you're gonna smoke as a destroyer, don't smoke when you're already air spotted. Either smoke beforehand or just don't smoke at all. Because you're 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 slowing down to to smoke. And we have an AFK air zone. So that is unfortunate. And we are playing spotted by the enemy Ryujo, so 
go ahead and drop our Arizona some fighters. There we go. Plane spotted. Oh. But as I said, yeah. Don't don't do into that. Because you're you're making it easier for him to hit you because you're giving up one of the the best things of a of a um a destroyer, which is your high mobility. And see, in that case, you notice our AA shot down the fighter, or the aircraft, but not our actual fighter. Yes. It's not a great drop, but any chip damage on some of these lower tier cruisers will help. And there we go. There's the Citadel. So we're going to start moving uh, towards Seaside. Our team is kind of... I'm not quite sure what our team is doing. The issue here is, is all of our battleships are in the middle of the map. We're kind of giving up both flanks, and we've already lost our Farragut. And he, he got jumped by both destroyers, the Pensacola, the worst by all of them. So in terms of map control, we don't have a lot, so we, we kind of can just keep hammering this one flank and, and helping out stall their push basically is what we want to do we want to stall their push this fighter here i'm not sure who this this is going to strike he might go after the arizona he might go for the normandy he might go for the arizona the second arizona not sure i'll drop the fighter on the normandy to kind of give him protection but and we're just going to go back to blue and this, this uh The defense goals are very squishy, heavy cruisers here. Yeah, and see, like individually, each ship doesn't have that great of AA, but when they're all clumped up like that together, it, it's very hard to get multiple strikes. So, oh, I think Arizona came back. That's nice. Um, so in that sense, that's why we're pre-dropping. We're, we're preserving planes in the beginning. Um, just so that we don't get the plane too easy and we can manage the the losses. And I'm actually going to come drop a fighter for this Byron. It does look like this Ranger is, is tempting uh, a drop on him. So what I'm doing here is I didn't drop it right now in the Byron because I'm not going to be able to stop the drop, the, the first drop. So I dropped it behind him. So that when the uh, when the ranger passes through after the drop, he's now fighter tagged. And there we go. And I'm, I myself am going to drop this macro uh, because my friendly Byron has shot down the fighter. So now I can drop this macro. Now this macro has a choice: does he give me a good line, or does he turn broadside to my Byron and eat some of those from him? And he chose to eat some of those from me. So now he's super low isolated, so I'm just going to try and go for a second drop. This. There we go. And sit it up. Okay. Uh, so looking at the map, Boost is kind of isolated. Dallas might be... I think Dallas is, might have pushed around, or she's still hiding behind that island. We're not sure. She hasn't been spotted in a bit, so... I'm not entirely sure where she is. I'm gonna go straight to Spuso and then uh, our Byron got chewed up. Uh. I think that Fuso is actually stopped. Yeah, there's the Dallas. She's, Dallas is pushed in behind the island. So I'm gonna make a drop on this Fuso because it looks like this Fuso stopped. And she is in fact stopped. I'm gonna try. There we go. There we go. Two torpedoes on K. Gonna, she's gonna push through that uh, island chain to go brawl or to Mexico, and torpedoes aren't aren't gonna be very useful there. And in fact, I can already see the Ranger is flying over there. So we just struck the Fuso twice. 
So chances are the ranger, if we just blew his planes, is probably going to drop fighters on that that Fuso. So I'm gonna actually going to strike the Dallas, predicting that he's going to drop fighters on the other guy. It's very likely that uh, that Dallas is actually just going to be flying. I didn't drop fighters. Interesting. The Dallas is going to take the fighters. down some of the rangers' points. Need a bombers. Nah. So I know that that Dallas is low. I'm either gonna go toward him or he's gonna come out broadside in front of our Pensacola and die to the Pensacola Z. So, if he doesn't die right here to that salvo... Hang on a minute. And the Mexico actually just blocked that Fuso, so we're actually going to go over here. And start to kill. Our Pensacola should be able to kill the, um, the cruiser. I'm actually just going to kill this, this uh, Uso, because I'm pretty sure, yep, there we go, the Mexico died. So see, the Ranger just did what we did, he just dropped the fighter ahead of us. So in seeing this, I'm going to drop the payload, cancel, and immediately recall, so that they don't go into that fighter ring. There we go. And we got all four of those planes back. Somewhat something done. Um, I'm actually gonna move my carrier up this way, so I can. I'm gonna try and push into um, into C. We need to kill that Dallas though. I'm not sure if that's a cool to get a getting cross shot by the Dunkirk. Yep. Uh, that's unfortunate. So we'll go kill him. We know he's low. We know he doesn't have any health. He doesn't really have any support. And it's, it's only going to take one to kill him. Even if the ranger drops a fighter, it, it's still worth it for us to do this. There we go. Only took an overpen, but that's all that was needed. And actually... I was gonna go push back over towards uh, my team over in the, uh, in the south side, but we need points. We're, we're super far down. We need to go and contest that. I'm just gonna have to, to push and and try and strike the Dunker. Because uh, we can't let him take this cap. We need to reset him. Reset. Two torpids. He didn't get the fighter attack, which is nice. That means we can come in for a three second strike after they've got how they attacked on us. And you see you see how we we've, we've lost two aircraft to the fighters, but they're still attacking. gonna move wide here because uh, I don't want to get surface spotted by that Dunkirk because uh, that Dunkirk could definitely kill me if I let myself get surface spotted he's actually turning towards the Normandy I'm gonna come in from behind you see he's, he's turning towards the Normandy so I want to come in from behind I want to get a nice 
Now, our fusion bombers are not super effective on Frenchies, on, on French battleships. Uh, you can get citadels, but for the most part, you, you don't. Um, but I don't have full squad of torpedo bombers, and I need to reset the Dunkirk. So, in that case, since I knew that, I'm just, I don't know, everyone's dying. <laughs> We should be able to kill the Dunkirk with this squad of torpedo bombers. Assuming I, I don't gaff the drops up, I should be able to kill him. Now he's, he's pushing himself against this island where he can't actually... Um, he can't maneuver. You see, he's got to turn into my, my torpedo bombers. So I'm actually just going to drop there and then turn here because I don't want to fly into the fighter radius of the Regis fighters that she just dropped to the start right there. And in fact, it looks like the Furious is actually doing some trips in here. Although, it looks like he did get the cap, so... Not reset him enough, unfortunately. So... Dunkirk down. But unfortunately, it, it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to do anything else. Um, unfortunately, my team just kind of meandered uh, in the middle too long and gave them cap control. And I, as a carrier, you can't really do too much uh, about that. Health that Furious has. I don't know how much health in Mexico has either. I'm gonna go see how much health he has. He might be low, I'm not sure. Okay, we've slipped finally into C. Now that we've killed the Dunkirk, we can just push into C. Um, it's not gonna help too much, um, but it'll at least stall their points a little. And there's the Ranger actually. I'm actually, just right him because. Oh, hello. Hey. Oh, I'm from the Rijo too. Back to over here. Um, because as I mentioned, uh, the tier, tier 6 carriers are very lightly armored, and in fact, you can actually sit at the Ranger. Ah. And time ran out, so. Unfortunately, we just, we didn't have enough time to really punish the enemy and, and kill them out, and that's kind of the issue. Um, with the carrier is because our team meandered too much, we didn't get cap control, we didn't have any caps to our name actually, and we just we lost too many points and they gained too many. And by the time we, we came back, it, they had such a huge point lead that we couldn't turn it over. We Our planes aren't fast enough, we couldn't make strikes fast enough to kill enough people to make it matter. So in this case, the game ended. Um, we, we did... 109k damage, 4 kills, confederate. We definitely gave it our best. 1.3k uh, base XP, top of the team. Um, but in some cases, you can't win them all. Um, I suppose the only thing I could have done better is focus the other flank, the, the non-heavy flank, and kill those ships out faster. But, I mean, hindsight's 2020. So, unfortunately, games like that are just how it goes. Um, so that's the Ryuzhou. Um... This is going to be the first video in the series. Um, so next uh, video, uh, we will be talking about the Shikaku, which is the Tier 8 Japanese aircraft carrier. So until then, this is Congo, and I will see you later.